Ambrose Channel, 20 miles southeast of the tip of Manhattan. We're on the bridge of the U.S. Coast Guard buoy tender, Juniper. Today, the 225-foot ship is servicing a marker that guides shipping vessels to the port of New York and New Jersey. It spends weeks at sea, plucking tons of metal and anchors from the water, repairing the equipment, and putting them back where they belong. Buoys need constant attention. Waves, weather, and impacts from passing boats and barges all take a toll. The buoy is 35 feet long and held to the seabed with an 18,000 pound concrete block called a sinker. Once the juniper is in position, the deckhands must secure the buoy to the hull with ropes and chains. One deckhand tosses a rope over the tip of the buoy, while one of his shipmates leans over the gunwale, placing his torso between the heaving buoy and the ship, securing the end of the line. After that's accomplished, they quickly step away as a 65-foot boom of the on-deck crane slowly lifts the buoy onto the deck. Yellow buoys like this one mark the outer edges of cautionary boundaries where cargo ships must choose a designated channel to safely approach port. It's fitted with lights and an air whistle so that ships in the dark will know where it is located. The whistle has no mechanical parts. The motion of the waves drives air through a tube running through the buoy, creating a low bellowing noise that ships can hear from many miles away. The real work begins as soon as the buoy is secured on deck. Length of one and a half inch chain must be replaced. The crane operator uses an eight foot tall in-haul winch to draw in the chain from the water. The older lengths are cut away with a hand torch, while new chain is attached with a method that is as old as the railroads, heating a pin and shackle, and then smashing them together with a sledgehammer. The Coast Guardsmen call this a heat and beat. This particular buoy has not been out of the water since January 2007. The base of the buoy and the chain connecting it has become home to many layers of sea life. Layers of mollusks and sea creature colonies can weigh down a buoy and block the air tube that leads to the whistle. Deckhands with scrapers attack the growth immediately. One unlucky soul, usually a rookie, must enter the three foot wide air tube and clean it from within. This is as disgusting as it sounds. The next thing that needs to be checked are the buoy's lights. 20 year old seaman Savannah Sibley climbs to the tip of the buoy with nothing but 57 degree water beneath her. She checks the status of the light to make sure that none of the yellow flashing bulbs have burned out. In this case, they haven't. The Coast Guard is gradually replacing the traditional bulbs used in most of the thousands of buoys it services. The installation of new, tougher LEDs is enabling buoy tenders to stretch the interval between maintenance checks from two years to three. The buoy is now ready to be placed back into the water. The crane operator lowers a nine-ton sinker with the winch, then uses the crane's main arm to carefully slide the buoy off the gunnel. The deckhands quickly detach the lines and the crane lowers the buoy into the water. As the ship gets farther away, the noise of the wave whistle fades. The crew does not look back. They have three more buoys left to do on the day schedule, and 16 remain for the week. <laughs>